John chapter 4. How many of you are glad that he woke you up this morning? And when they say it started me on my way. Cold in my right mind. Aren't you glad you're saved? Don't you wish everybody was? You know, you have a lot of people these days, a catch word or pocket of phrase is, we have to save this country. The only way to save this country is to save this country. Only way the country can get saved, can be saved, is if the country gets saved. Amen. Until then, you're going to just continue to have what you have. St. John chapter 4, the Gospel of John, the fourth chapter, beginning with the first verse. I'll read. You guys can read along or try to catch up or just look or whatever. Amen. When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself baptized not but his disciples, he left Judea and departed again unto Galilee, and he must needs go through Samaria. Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. There cometh the woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus saith unto her, Give me to drink, for his disciples were gone away into the city to buy meat. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is that thou, being a Jew, ask drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. The woman saith unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well, and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water, shall thirst again but whosoever drinketh of the water that i shall give him shall never thirst but the water that i shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life the woman saith unto him sir give me this water that i thirst not neither come hither to draw jesus saith unto her go call thy husband and come hither the woman answered and said i have no husband Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband, for thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou now hast is not thy husband, and that saidest thou truly. The woman said to him, Sir, I perceive <laughs> that thou art a prophet. Our fathers worshiped in this mountain, and you say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh. You shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship, you know not what we know. What we worship for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The woman saith unto him, I know that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ, when he is come. He will tell us all things. Jesus said unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. Father, bless us this morning. In by and through our reception of your holy word. And we give you praise, glory, and honor in advance for the blessings that we expect to receive. In Jesus' name, let the church say amen. amen. Say amen again. Amen. One more time. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. The first verse of the text that serves as our foundation today, St. John chapter 4 verse 1 begins by stating, when therefore the Lord knew, when therefore the Lord knew 
how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made them baptize more disciples than John. And as others have translated it as when therefore the Lord learned or the Lord heard, and which actually portrays his humanity. Jesus was and is God come in the flesh, amen. But he laid aside his divinity, amen, and he acted, amen, under the unction of the Holy Spirit. And, and he did not always exercise his omniscience in every circumstance and situation. He had to get to know things as they happened in certain respects, amen. And so he heard something, amen, that precipitated his, or it accounted for this particular journey that he embarked upon that we read here in St. John chapter four and one. Can I take my time? And what he learned was that the religious leaders, the Pharisees, had become aware of the fact that Jesus was enjoying more ministerial and evangelistic success than John the Baptist had previously enjoyed, amen. And they had a problem with the success of John, amen. And I kind of like don't blame them a little bit because the fame and the noise of John the Baptist's evangelistic and ministerial baptism campaigns had reached the ears of the Pharisees. And when they went out to see what was going on, and he called them out. He looked up there, you snakes. And he's, he's over here, too, and they looked out in the crowd, and some bishops, I mean some rabbis was out there. And, you snakes, a generation of vipers, who warned you to flee? from the wrath that is to come. And he said, bring forth fruit, meat for repentance, or, you know, bring forth uh, fruit that's fit for repentance. And he called them out, and so they were antagonistic towards him. And so now we hear, here's, some, here's another one now. Here's, here's Jesus, and he's baptizing more than John. John's disciples had actually got into, if you read in the third chapter of the book of John, uh, John the Baptist's disciples had got into some discussions and debate with the rabbis, and then they went to John, and they're gonna report to John. John, uh, Jesus' ministry is bigger than yours now, and, 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 and he's baptizing more people than you are, amen. And, and, and John did not allow that spirit of competitive jealousy to overwhelm him because he was aware of what his calling and his purpose was. And, and he, he said, listen, uh, I, 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 my job is to introduce the bride to the bridegroom, amen. The bridegroom comes and my job is to introduce the bride to the bridegroom. And the word that he used in there is a word that, that, that uh, symbolizes the function of the individual whose job it was to do that, to present the bride to the bridegroom, to oversee the, the, the wedding and to, uh, you know, coordinate, be basically the wedding coordinator. And he said, that's my job. And then he turned around and said, he wouldn't be doing anything unless God was with him. He wouldn't be able to do what he's doing. And then he turned around and said, he must increase while I must decrease. But he wasn't saying that out of any, once again, jealousy or anything like that. He was actually saying it out of relief. Like, phew, I've done my job. I did what I was supposed to do. I was supposed to prepare the way for the Messiah, introduce Israel to the Messiah. Then once he comes on the scene, I get to get out the way. Say amen. Uh, and so, <laughs> he said it was good, amen. I'm glad my time is over. I've fulfilled my purpose, my, 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 my course is finished, amen. And so, once again, so the account of Jesus' success had reached the Pharisees and the messengers, amen, the spies, the, the gossips, the tale bearers, the, the, the reporters, amen, informing them. They said Jesus is attracting greater crowds than John had previously attracted. Just when we get finished with one thread, to our religious way of doing and being, here comes another threat, amen. And they said he's baptizing more people with the baptism of repentance than John was baptizing them because that was the baptism they utilized, the baptism of repentance. And then the gospel writer, John, he interjects parenthetically, he was quick to add, he said, but Jesus himself, 
did not do any of the baptizing. His disciples, he personally did not baptize anyone. His disciples did. And, and, and the Holy Ghost was good to have that in there. Amen. He's saying his disciples performed the actual ritual. And he did that in order that later on, nobody might be able to claim a more superior baptism than the others. Like, well, who baptized you? I was baptized by John. Yeah, yeah. But well, ah, Jesus baptized me. You know how folk get. I remember when I first, I met some folks, I talked to some folk and I, early on. And you saved? Yeah, I'm saved. You too? Yeah, well, whose name are you baptized in? You know, you might think you're saved. You know, the fruit inspectors. How many of y'all know the fruit inspectors? Because once again, to be baptized by Jesus' own hands could later be constricted or construed into a mark of superiority and gender elitism in the church. We saw that later on with someone saying, I'm of Paul and I'm of Apollos. And, uh, you know, we, we get like that. It's all right. It's cool. It's just part of church dynamics. It's a lot of stuff in church that's of church that's not in the Bible. Somebody will tell me one time, well, this and that ain't in the Bible. That ain't in the Bible. I said, ushers ain't in the Bible either. But we still have them in church. Greeters ain't in the Bible, but we still have them in church. Somebody tried to do the all sin is sin with me, uh, somebody recently. And, and um, I said, no, sin is crime against God. So just like all crime is not the same on earth, all sin is not the same to heaven. I said, now, if that's the case, jaywalking is a crime. But it's not equal to murder. So, you, <laughs> so, you know, people just love to try to, amen. And so Jesus knew that, and the Holy Ghost knew that for Jesus to have baptized could have led or engendered division and strife. And so the Bible states that upon hearing or learning of the Pharisees' awareness of his ministerial accomplishments, he left Judea and departed again into Galilee. No doubt at the bequest of the leading of the Holy Ghost because he said, I always do what the Father wants me to do. And the Bible says, he must needs go through Samaria. Say amen, somebody. Uh, Jesus, at this stage of his ministry, amen, did not want to be involved in a controversy regarding baptism. I didn't want to get into a contest over whose ministry is the biggest and whose ministry is the best and whose baptism how. And so the Holy Ghost leads him, amen, to, to leave Judea for the time being and to transfer his headquarters and transfer his operations to Galilee. And what makes this journey, amen, noteworthy was that there was a centuries old feud that existed between the Jews and the Samaritans. And this was not the usual route. The route that he went was not the usual route for a Jew to take to go into Galilee from Judea, amen. And because those of Judea Partic practically never traveled, never traveled to Galilee through Samaria. They would not set foot in Samaria, even though that was the quickest, more convenient way. The Jews would take an alternate route, amen. Uh, 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 they would go across the Jordan River, amen, which would take twice as long uh, for them to get there, but they did not want to go into Samaria, amen. So when the woman said that the Jews had no dealings with Samaritans, she was stating a fact. Are you still with me? Because the Jews in Judea held the Samaritans and the town of Samaria in utter contempt. They looked down on the Samaritans. They considered themselves, amen, to be better than them. They considered themselves to be superior to them. The Jews considered themselves to be of a higher class, a higher quality, a higher character than the Samaritans. To them, the Samaritans were a hybrid race, amen, but we were, we were of the pure stock, amen. And so, no self-respect Jew at that time would even set foot in Samaria for any reason at all. So then Jesus, however, had to pass through Samaria if he desired to take the shortest, most convenient route into Galilee. And on the way, him and his disciples, amen, came to the city of Sychar, amen. It was just short 
of those, amen, the road, it was just short of this road to Samaria, the, the road forks, when you get right there to Sychar, the road forks, amen, it's right on the outskirts of Samaria, the road forks, and at the fork in the road, there stood this well, amen, now, it was still there 4,000 years later, Jacob's well, Jacob had purchased the well, amen, and, uh, and, 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 and then he had bequeathed it to his son, Joseph, amen, and then and after, after Joseph died in Egypt, he said, carry my bones. Don't leave my bones in Egypt, amen. Don't leave me there. When y'all go out, y'all take me with you, amen. Uh, see, that's what's wrong with this generation today. They don't want to carry Joseph's bones, amen, uh, with them. They don't want to honestly contend for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. It's just so much nonsense now that they try to undermine the word of God rather than, come on, say amen to me. And so and they, they took jo Joseph's bones with them and they buried him right there near this well, amen. So it's known of as Jacob's well. And the writer states that Jesus being weary sat thus on the well. That word thus used to express just how exhausted Jesus was from this journey that he was on, amen. Now, he was utterly worn out. He's still once again, as I stated, walking this earth in the flesh. His humanity, amen, is on full display even as his divinity flashed through at times. He's utterly exhausted. He sat on the well. And as he sat there, a Samaritan woman comes to this well to draw water. And the Bible says it was the sixth hour. Amen. Which is 12 o'clock. The sun is at its hottest. This overhead. Jesus is hot, tired, and wet, and sweaty, and exhausted. And here a woman of Samaria just happens to come along. Are you with me right now? Now, why she would even come to this well is a bit of a mystery because it was more than a half a mile away from Sychar where she must have lived and there were other water sources there. This well was at the fork in the road. It was a, it was a rest stop for travelers, amen. It wasn't for the residents of the city, amen. It was a rest stop. Come on, talk to me. So the thought is that she was such of a moral outcast, so, so, such of a social and moral outcast, and, and we'll touch on that later, amen, that the other woman drove her, amen, away from the village, and she had to go to the outskirts of town, to the rest stop, to that place, somebody say that place, to draw water. And as she comes to draw water, she encounters a stranger, amen, that requests her to give her a drink, amen. Uh, she turns in astonishment. She looks and says, oh, wait a minute. I'm a Samaritan, amen, and you are a Jew. How are you asking water from me? How are you asking me to give you some water? Now, Jesus crossed right here at least two significant barriers in this narrative. Three significant barriers in this narrative. Amen. First, he crossed a socio-ethnic barrier, amen, of centuries of Jewish and Samaritan prejudice and discrimination. He, he crosses that barrier, and then he goes past the gender barrier that existed and created class distinction between male and female. You know, a rabbi at that time was not even supposed to speak to a woman, amen. A rabbi wouldn't even speak to his wife or daughters in public at that time. It was a barrier that existed, amen, between male and female, and Jesus was of the rabbinic class, amen. Especially, he wasn't supposed to speak to a Samaritan woman. He wasn't supposed to speak to a Samaritan at all, let alone a Samaritan woman, amen. And then he went across a moral barrier imposed by this woman's, amen, assumed behavior, amen. Her presence at that way assumed the type of woman that she was. Now, the heart of this story appears in verses 23 and 24, where the Bible says, the Father has been seeking those that will worship him in spirit and in truth. He's been seeking true worshipers, amen, and, and that is why the Father sent Jesus to that particular place, at that particular time, and to that particular woman. How many of you know that Jesus will go anywhere for everybody and go everywhere for anybody? 
Y'all talk to me, I'll preach better. I'm so glad that he's not an elitist. I'm so glad that he's not a racist. I'm so glad that he's not a separatist. I'm so glad that he's not a segregationist. I'm so glad he's not a supremacist. He's not a respected person. He is not influenced by somebody's social status or somebody's economic status. He is not impressed by titles or by credentials or by positions. Amen. He will go wherever he needs to go in order to reach whoever he needs to reach in order to obtain true worship. Somebody say amen right there. And I'm so glad that when Jesus reaches those that he desires to reach, he does not restrict his salvation only to those who graduated from Bible college. I'm so glad he doesn't do background checks. I'm so glad that Jesus doesn't pull credit reports before he decides to call somebody. I'm glad he does not take us through a vetting process to see if we're qualified to be saved. Amen. To qualified to be selected. I'm glad he does not only choose those who are perfect and those who are spotless and those who are error free. How many of you know when Jesus chooses, amen, he doesn't go to the upper class. He doesn't go to the elite. He doesn't go to the bougies. Y'all don't want to help me. He goes down into the gutter. He goes into the club. He goes out onto the street corners. He goes into gangs and he goes into crap houses and he goes he goes into bars and he goes into recording studios and he goes into penitentiaries he goes to dysfunctional families and he goes to broken homes and he goes to the projects and he goes to the trailer camps and he selects drug users and he selects alcoholics and he selects fornicators and he selects street people he gets people help me holy ghost who have, who have been uh, he gets the ones that have been divorced. He gets the ones that have been evicted and foreclosed on. He gets people who have filed bankruptcy or have children out of wedlock. The Bible says not many wise and not many nobles after the flesh. Not many mighty are called. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise and those that are low those that are hated on those who have been abused and those who have been mistreated and those who are hurting and those who have been wounded and those who are in pain how many of you know that it seems foolish to the got it all together people any of y'all know some of them folks some of those got it all together folks it seems foolish to the never made a mistake crowd or the perfect click. Help me, Holy Ghost. It seems foolish to the never fail or never made a mistake group for God's amazing grace to save a wretch like you and you and me. Oh, it seems foolish to him to save a liar like you, a fornicator like you, a criminal like you. It seems foolish for God to save somebody with a past like yours who live like you live who did what you did who behaved like you behaved who acted like you acted who drank like you drank who smoked like you smoked oh help me holy ghost but it says God did it somebody say God did it God chose you to confound the wise to confound the skeptic to confound the judges to confound the critics to confound the proud to confound the elite oh help me somebody the Bible says he must needs go through Samaria now geographically it was the straight way it was the easy way, the convenient way, the nearer, it was the more natural way, it was the smart way, but it was not the usual way. It was not the conventional way. Because how many of you know that God will use, God will take unconventional ways to reach those that he desires to reach. <laughs> He'll call some people from a burning bush. He'll call some people through the mouth of an animal. He'll speak. Some people he'll speak to in a dream or a vision. He'd not call off his horse just to get his attention. Come on, talk back to me. So instead of Jesus taking the conventional route, I'm not going to go through Samaria. 
I'm going to go around. It's a little bit more difficult to go around, but I don't want to have anything to do with these folk. Uh, Y'all know how it is when you don't want to have something to do with some folk. You don't answer the phone if the number is blocked. Half the time if the number isn't blocked, you still not answer. You look at that, you look at that area code. Who is this? Mm, this is a trap right here. This is a trap. <laughs> Instead of taking the conventional path, he chose to take a path that nobody else would take. And he did it as a protest against the prejudices, amen, of those who wouldn't take it, amen. It was a protest against their prejudice and as an in indication of the inclusiveness of his messiahship. Because let me make it plain, the true gospel of inclusion is the good news that Jesus will accept you as you are, but he will not allow you to remain what you are. Oh, come on, that's why they get it twisted. He will accept the homosexual, but he will turn them straight. He will accept the fornicator, but he will make them virtuous. He will accept the drug addict. He will accept the alcoholic, but he will sober them up. He will accept the liar and then make him truthful. He will accept the thief and then make him honest. He accepts those that are broken, but then he will put them back together again. Oh yeah, you can come to him the way that you are, but if you really get to him, you will not be able to remain the way that you were. Shout about it. He went to Samaria. He went to that place. Everybody say that place. He went to that place where nobody else would go. Because how many of you will be honest enough to admit this morning that there's a place in your life, help me Holy Ghost, there's that place in your life that nobody else can and nobody else will be able to go to. I know I'm talking right. If y'all don't want to talk to you, I'll talk to myself. There's a place in your life. There's that place in your life. That place in your mind. That place in your spirit. That place in your soul. That place in your feelings. That place in your memories. There's that place of shame. That place of tears. That place of failure. That place of hurt and pain. That place of fear and worry. There's a place in your life. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? That place. Somebody say that place. That place of disappointment. That place of regret. That place of bitterness. That place of depression. That place. Talk to me somebody. There's a place in your life. That place. Somebody say that place. That nobody else can go to. And nobody else can get to. But Jesus. Help me Holy Ghost. How many of you have ever been in that place? That place of loneliness and depression. That place of frustration and confusion. That place of uncertainty and despondency. That place where your heart was broken. That place where your dreams were shattered. That place where your entire life was disrupted by something that you had no control over. Somebody say that place. Yeah, that place. That place. That place right there. Shout about it. He goes to Samaria. That forbidden place. That forbidden area. That restricted place. That, 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 that impermissible place. That place where nobody is allowed to enter. Oh, everybody has that place in their life. Oh, somebody said that about me one time. I don't know if it was a compliment or a criticism. They said, oh, Scott, I let you up on the porch. But he ain't let you in the house. Come on, talk back to me. Because I'm talking about you right there. You'll let him up on the porch. You'll let him even in the hallway. They can come into the vestibule, but they ain't getting all the way in. Because there's a place in your life that nobody can come in but God and it seems like that place is the place that needs God the most shout about it goes to Samaria that place that nobody else will go to and he arrives at a well 
John, amen, in this gospel, began this gospel. We know it. Very familiar. That's about the, the, the main gospel that we know all the beginning to. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was God with God. And the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. And then we know the part that says, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. But we can keep on going. The Word which was God. And the Word which was made flesh. And the Word that dwelt among us must needs go to Samaria. Help me, Holy Ghost. And go to that place that nobody else would go to in order to reach a person that nobody else could reach because you have to understand saints that there's that place in your life that Jesus must needs go to there's that place in your home there's that place in your family there's that place in your marriage there's that place in your thoughts there's that place in your emotions that Jesus must need go to look at somebody next to you touch them and tell them say there that place in you that Jesus must need go to. He needs to go to your place of inner turmoil. He needs to go to that place of your private worries. He needs to go to that place of your secret stress. He needs to go to that place of your personal pain. He needs to go to that place of the issues that you try to conceal so that he can transform that place into a place of worship that is performed in spirit and in truth. Shout about it. He goes to that place. Nobody else would go to. He takes a route to get there that nobody else would take. He then encounters in that restricted, isolated, forbidden place a person that is there all alone. Because let me tell you something I've learned by experience, and I know most of you can testify to it. When you're in that place, there's a place that you're in all by yourself. And you can be surrounded by people and still feel all alone. They can be talking to you, they can be riding with you, they can be living in your home, they can be with you at the job, but you still feel all alone because you're in that place. Now once again, John's mention of that place at the time of day of her coming there all by herself causes us to arrive at the conclusion that this woman was a social outcast, that she was a misfit, she was a reject, amen, she was a social pariah and her past and her present had combined, amen, and succeeded in isolating her from the mainstream of society, amen. Uh, her past and her present, the condition of her life prevented her from enjoying normal relationships, amen. She didn't have normal friendships or normal interactions with others of her kind, amen. Uh, does anybody know what I'm talking about? I'm up here talking to myself. Uh, so Jesus goes to that place when nobody else would go and he finds someone there all alone. I'm talking to somebody whether you want to admit it or not. There's somebody in here on this morning or you're watching online. You're in that place right now, that uncomfortable place. That lonely and hospitable place all by yourself. And you feel so all alone. You feel so isolated, so detached, so distant, so removed from everybody else. The Bible says there came a woman of Samaria a woman of that place. This place had become home to her. It was a permanent dwelling place. And some of you today, you become at home in your discomfort. You become at home in your disillusionment. You become at home in your despair. You become at home in your loneliness and frustration. You become accustomed to living your life in a place of permanent discomfort because of the experience that you have encountered in the course of your life. So then Jesus engages this woman in open conversation with a request on the human level, the level of human, his own human necessity. And, but it was, a, it was a natural request, but it had spiritual ramifications to it. Uh, because oftentimes God will have you do something in the natural that has spiritual ramifications to it. Amen. Because the story bears out the fact that 
He knew this woman. He knew all about her. We know from the story. We said he knew her past history and he knew her present life. That's why she said, man, this guy must be a prophet. He knows everything about me. In fact, afterwards, when she went in, she said, y'all got to come see this dude. Because he told me everything about me. That didn't nobody else know. And so she replies to him. When he said, give me something to drink. She says, how can one like you ask something like that from one like me? I'm in somebody's life right now because you've asked God the same question. <laughs> Lord, how can one like you <laughs> call somebody like me? How can you ask something from somebody like me? I, I've committed so much wrong in my life. I, I've made so many mistakes. I, I've had so many failures. I, I've had so many transgressions. I, I feel like Jacob felt when he met Pharaoh. He said, few and evil have been the days of my life. How can one like you expect something from somebody like me? I've shamed myself so many times. I, I've slept with people I should have never slept with. I've lied to people that I shouldn't have lied to. I behave myself like I should have never behaved myself. I've done so much that I should never have done until I've arrived at this place in my life that nobody else is allowed to come to. And I feel so all alone. I feel so messed up. How can one like you? How can somebody holy like you? How can somebody righteous like you? How can somebody as magnificent as you? How could somebody that's God like you asking something from somebody that's as wretched as I am, that's as low as I am? But Jesus said, if you knew who it was that was asking you for something, if you knew who it was that's calling you to this, if you knew who it was that's giving you this assignment, if you had the revelation of who I am, and what I called you to do you do what I told you to do despite your flaws despite your shortcomings despite your social status if you have the revelation of who I am you recognize the fact that none of your liabilities can disqualify you for the purpose that I have for your life if you obey my voice if you hearken to my word if you submit to my will no matter where you are right now he said if you knew who I was if you knew who I was and knew what I was asking you to do if you knew who I was and knew about me asking you to give me some water you would ask me for some of my water you would ask me to do something for you that only God is able to do. Because how many of you know that only God, help me Holy Ghost, can satisfy the thirst in your life? Only God can quench that thirst that keeps causing you to fail. Only God can quench that thirst that keeps consuming you. That thirst, amen, that thirst for sex, that thirst for self-esteem, that thirst for companionship, that thirst for material things, that thirst for acceptability, that thirst for popularity, that thirst for respectability. She said, Lord, help me, Holy Ghost, give me some of your water so that I do not ever thirst again. Oh, neither will I even come back to this well to draw some more water. Give me some of your water, Lord, so that the cravings that consume me will stop. Amen. So I don't have to come back here again. Give me some of your water. Give me some of your refreshment. Give me some of that. Regenerate me. Reinvigorate me. Replenish me so that I do not have to come back to that place ever again. Shout about it. Revitalize me, Lord, so I don't get like this again. Restore me, Lord, so I don't make the same mistakes again. Replenish me with the water of your word so I do not fall in that same sin again. I don't repeat my same failures again. I don't practice my same failures 
again. Give me some of your water, Lord, so I'm not sleeping around again. Give me some of your water, Lord, so I don't go back off drugs again. Give me some of your water, Lord, so I don't get big crime again. Give me some of your water, Lord. We knew me in the spirit of my mind so that I can prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I don't ever want to come back to this place. I don't want to ever be in this condition, in this mindset, in these thought processes, with these desires, and these habits, and these proclivities. I don't want to get back in this circumstance. I don't want to be back in this situation. I don't ever want to be in this shame, in this pain, in this embarrassment, in this ridicule, in this struggle. I I don't want to be back in this turmoil ever again. Am I talking to anybody this morning? Give me some of your water, Lord, so I don't thirst after illicit sex again. Give me some of your water, Lord, so I don't thirst after drugs. Give me some of your water, Lord, so I don't thirst after alcohol. Fill me, Lord, with your water so I can stop being thirsty for that which is carnal. Give me some of your water so I can stop being lonely. I can stop being depressed. I can stop feeling rejected. I can stop being confused. Give me some of your water so that the void that is in my life can be completely filled. And I don't have to go back to that place in my mind, that place in my heart, that place in my feelings, that place in my thoughts. I'm disillusioned, I'm disappointed in myself and in other people. Nobody really knows how I feel inside. If you knew how I felt inside, you wouldn't be so quick to judge me. Nobody is aware of my thoughts. Oh, I might have failed, but let me tell you something. I didn't fall easy. I struggled on my way down. Y'all don't want to help me, I help myself. Nobody is aware of my thoughts and my intents. I, I didn't get this way on purpose. I, I never thought I would wind up like this. Lord, give me some water. Give me a word that would deliver me from that place so that I never have to come back here again. Shout about it. And Jesus says, go. Call your husband. And the reason he said that was that because before he could give her that which she desired, there had to first be moral investigation and inner correction. Jesus was saying, I got what you need. Look at somebody say, he's got what you need. I've got what you need to bring you out of that place. I've got the water that you need. But before you can amen receive it, there are some things in your life that have to be set right. Shout about it. Call your husband and come then come in. Because that's the root of your problem. He said, before I can deliver you, I've got to get to the root of your problem. I need you to come to me so I can deal with the root of this thing. And so she says, I have no husband, which was only a partial truth. And Jesus said, you said it right, but you've had five husbands in your past. And you're with a man right now. He's not your husband, but y'all shacking. She said, I don't have a husband. But when she said, I have no husband, all of her problems came to a head. Because you have to understand, saints, that women at that time were not allowed to divorce their husband for any reason at all. No matter what he did, no matter how he treated her or mistreated her, she was not allowed to divorce him for any reason at all. But men at that time were able to divorce their wives 
for any reason that they wanted to. If he walked in and didn't like the look on her face, he could divorce her. So the fact that she had had five husbands meant that she had been divorced five times. It meant that she had been hurt five times. She had been rejected time out. She had been abandoned. She had been mistreated. She had been cast off. She had been put down. She had been put away time after time after time after time again. How many of you know each one of her relationships she did not go into a marriage thinking about divorce. Each one of her relationships had begun in optimism. Each one was a new step of faith. Each one was full of expectation but they all wound up this next one wound up the same as the last one. Each one ended in failure. Each one ended in shame. Each one ended in rejection. Each one ended in tears. Each one ended in pain. Each one ended in frustration and disappointment and sorrow to the point where she said, I'm tired of this. I'm not starting over again. I'm losing all my confidence in the institution of marriage. She said, I'm not going out like that again. I'm not putting myself in harm's way like that again. I'm not going to allow myself to get hurt like that again. I'm not going to commit to anybody ever again. Yeah, I'm with somebody right now, but I can leave when I want to leave. I can get out when I want to get out. I'm not being locked down. I'm not being bound up anymore because the next one might wind up just like the last one. So I've got to go through life then. Putting up a front. Maintaining a facade. Isolated. Lonely. Withdrawn. I'm with somebody now. But he's, he ain't the one. And I'm looking at him. Seeing if I can see anything in him that was in number five, or number four, or number three, or number two, or number one. Because I'm not getting hurt like that again. I'm not letting anybody ever treat me like I was treated again. That's not going to happen to me again. I'm not releasing my control of my life over to anybody else again. But my isolation is really insulation. My pretense is really my defense. Because I can't afford to let my guard down. I'm talking to somebody. Because I'm not going to allow myself to be hurt like that again. I bet I don't know how I made it through them five times. Another root of her problem was the fact that Samaritans worshipped five gods. I don't have a stable man in my life. And I don't have a stable spiritual spiritual component to my life as, uh, either. My life in the, in the natural is fractured. And my life in the spirit is fractured as well. It's division. He said, I've been hurt so many times. I've failed so many times. I've had so many wrong relationships and made so many wrong choices and made so many wrong decisions and so many wrong actions that I'm not putting myself in the position of ever being victimized again. But Jesus said, go get your husband. Go get your past and your present. Don't get just part of it. Go get all of it and then come to me. And while you're bringing me my past, bringing me your past. Uh, when he said, go get your husband that represented the past. When you're bringing me your past, I'm going to address your present. Uh, you had five husbands in your past. Uh, you got one right now when your present is not your husband. Uh, you made some errors in your past. Uh, and in spite of what you feel, uh, you're on the brink of repeating the same mistake again. So he said, I need you to evaluate what you've been through and where you are right now. Come to me with what you've been through. Go get your husband. Yeah, five, that's right. Go get what you've been through. Bring me what you've been through. See, there's some of you right now, you don't want to bring Jesus what you've been through. You want to hold on to it. You want to keep it inside. Bring me what you've been through. Bring me your hurts. Bring me the pain. Go bring me your rejection. Bring me those bad memories. Bring me the trauma. Bring me the bruises.
bruises. Bring me the wounds. Bring me the cares. Bring me the betrayal. Bring me the abuse. Bring me the molestation. Bring me the rape. Bring me the bad decisions. Bring me the accident. Bring me the calamity. Bring me your tears. Bring me your pain. Bring me all the divorces. He said, come to me. When you come to me, bring me what you've been through. Y'all don't want to help me. And bring me what you've been through. And put it with where you are right now. Come to me with your current mindset, your current outlook, your current issues, your current problems, your current weakness, your current fears. He said, and I'll bring you to a place. I'll bring you to a position. I'll bring you to a point where you are going to worship God in spirit and in truth. I'm going to bring you to the place of true worship, where you worship God without any secrets. Worship God without any lies. Worship God without any deceit. Worship God without any hurts. Worship God God, pain free worship God, stress free worship God, issue free a place where you can worship God without any skeletons in your closet, without any fear of exposure. Talk back to me, a place where you can worship God without any scars, without any wounds, without any shame, without any bitterness, without any damage, without any trauma. How many of you will say, Lord, bring me to that place? Somebody say it right there. Bring me to that place. Bring me to that place, Lord, where I can worship you in spirit and in truth. Despite what I've been through, despite what I've done, despite my mistakes, bring me to the place where I can worship you in spirit and in truth and bring closure. Bring me to that place where I can worship you in spirit and in truth and I can bring closure. Help me, Holy Ghost. I can bring closure to my past. You can deal with my present so that I can fulfill the purpose that you have for me in my life. Come on, clap your hands. I'm gonna come to you, Lord. And I'm gonna bring you everything. Everything that I am. Everything that I was. Everything that I hope to be. You can bring closure to my failures, to my mistakes, to my struggle, to my issues once and for all deliver me from me so that I can worship you in spirit and is there anybody here right now that you want to bring closure to some unpleasant areas in your life once and for all closure to sin closure to shame closure to hurt closure to frustration closure to pain closure to depression once and for all if you're here I want you to lift up your voice and cry out to God because God said I want to give you a fresh start is there anybody here right now that wants a fresh start in God you want God to give you a fresh start I'm going to leave the past in the past so I can go forward in the name of the Lord I need a fresh start in my home I need a fresh start in my marriage I need a fresh start in my finances I need a fresh start in my emotions I need a fresh start in my thoughts I want you to open up your mouth and give God so God can erase any stigma from your past you want to know when you're delivered when you don't care anymore and it doesn't hurt anymore. It doesn't hurt anymore. I don't care what you do. I don't care what you say. You messed up, not me. You had this treasure in earth and vessels and you mistreated it. You did wrong, not me. I want you, Lord, to erase any stigma from my past and satisfy the thirst in my life. The 
reason we committed the transgressions, had the failures that we had, was because there was a thirst. We were thirsting after something that only God, come on, say amen to me. There was a thirst. And you look for this to satisfy the thirst, and that to quench the thirst, and this to quench the thirst. The only one that could really quench that thirst was God. He went from person to person, place to place, from thing to thing. No satisfaction, because the only one that could satisfy that thirst was God. God wants you to worship him in spirit, because spirit is the highest part of a person. Your spirit is the part of you that sees the visions. Your spirit is the part of you that dreams the dreams. True worship is when you obtain a friendship and an intimacy with God that is unparalleled with God, unparalleled with anything else in your life. You meet with God, you speak to God, and when you go to God, you don't have to repent first. You don't have to apologize first. You don't have to ask him to overlook this and that and that and that before you can get one-on-one -on -one with him. You can go to him when he deals with you in that place. When he fixes that place. There's no guilt, there's no shame, there's no condemnation. Say amen to me. Come on, clap your hands and give him glory. Come on, clap your hands and lift him up. Come on, give him a praise right there. Come on and keep on praising the Lord. Come on and keep on praising the Lord. Stay in an attitude of praise right now. Stay in an attitude of joy right now. Come on, let's, we're not rushing today. I'm not going to rush today. I, I, I think God wants something more. I think God has something more. I think something greater is on the way. I think, I think God is about to do a turnaround for somebody. I, I, think, I think somebody is at the brink of a breakthrough. I, I feel like somebody is about to change their destiny. I feel like somebody is about to do something different. I feel like somebody is about to say, I refuse to give up. I refuse to let go. I refuse to be a failure. I don't care how many failures were in my bloodline. I am not going to be a failure. Who am I talking to? Who am I talking to? I refuse to be in the number that doesn't win. Y'all don't hear me. I refuse to let my mistakes define the quality of the rest of my life. I refuse to let my disappointment define my praise. See, y'all getting around people that don't praise the Lord when they go through. See, y'all y'all don't get around people. You got to get around people that praise the Lord when they go through. You got to get around people that are afraid to get into a scrap down battle. You gotta get a, you gotta get around people. You gotta get some around, you gotta get some people that don't mind going there. I may be low, God, but I ain't going no lower. Y'all didn't y'all didn't hear me. I ain't going no lower. Cause there are some people that'll do anything. Tell, say, tell somebody I ain't doing anything. I'm setting some boundaries around myself. We going through, but we are coming out. I made some mistakes, but I ain't gonna make that mistake no more. I might be lonely, but I ain't gonna snatch somebody out just cause I'm lonely. Growing up is a process. I'm 67 years old. I'm so, I thank you, sweetie pie. I love you. I love my sons. I, I, this is my baby brother right here. And when we were kids, we weren't given positive affirmation. 
You weren't told you were going to be a success in life. You would grow, we grew up in an abusive situation. When our father didn't like something, he took it out on us. Ain't no shame in my testimony. My father wanted to be a boxer, sparred with Joe Lewis. Then he started having a bunch of kids and his, his purpose changed, his destiny changed. Too many of you are allowing your situation to change your future. But I know one thing that I told my baby brother after I got saved, we getting out of this. And if you follow me, didn't I tell it to you? Your brother-in-law told you, if you follow us, come out of the drugs, come out of the life, come out of this, come out of that, come out of that. God will do something great. 30 years later, 30 years later, somebody say, I met a man and he changed my future. And now I'm here to change somebody else's future. Come on, I dare you to praise the Lord online. I know we had a few problems, but I dare you to praise the Lord online. I dare you to look past your circumstance. I dare you to look past whatever you're doing right now. I dare you to tell yourself, I don't care what it looks like. I am coming out greater. Go tell five people, I don't care if they like it or not. You know they say they don't like that. Go tell five people, I'm coming out greater. 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 I'm coming out greater, Larry. I'm coming out greater. I'm coming out greater. Come on. Come on, I'm coming out greater. And then find you a couple of people that are coming out with you. Somebody say, I'm coming out too. I'm coming out too. Come on, Demetrius, we coming out. We coming out, baby. I dare you. I dare you to trust God. I know it looks challenging. I know it looks like there are obstacles after obstacles after obstacles. But somebody say, those are stairs. Those aren't obstacles. Those are stairs. Turn it around. Turn it around. Turn it around. He's a God of turnarounds. Say it. God of turnaround, turnarounds, 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 turnarounds. I don't know. Sometimes when you go throughout life, let me hurry up. Sometimes when you go throughout life and you form your opinion of things and you form your reason for things, you tell yourself, this is the only way for me to go. There are other roads. Say it. There are other roads. Sweetie, I got to do this. Would you do me a favor? Come here, sweetie. Bye. Oops, right, um, my darling. Yep, come on. Come on. Give me a couple of liters. Rosalind, yep, come on. And let her sit down. Uh-uh, y'all ain't about to hold her up. You know she just got out the hospital. She's been battling with cancer and dealing with cancer. It took a lot to come to church. I saw you when you were coming across the street. And the doctor said cancer spread. Uh-uh, don't say nothing. I didn't ask you to say nothing. I said for y'all to just listen. God said that as he has created you and as he has formed you, he said, I love you with an everlasting love. He said, I saw you before you were in your mother's womb. I created life in you. He said, at this point and at this juncture, things look difficult. And that's all that the doctors can see. Stop moving. That's all that the doctors can see is what they see. They see it spreading in the liver and all these different places. But I woke up this morning to tell you that God said, I am recreating. I am recreating. I bind up every free radical cell in your body. I bind up every cancerous cell in your body. And I speak under the authority of the Almighty God 
that God will begin to touch every area of your body, every limb, every liver, your spleen, the arteries, everything. And I command the healing power of Jesus Christ touch you from the crown of your head to the very soles of your feet. And I, I pray strength back into her body right now. I speak strength back into her life right now. I call wholeness back into her body right now. And in the mighty name of Jesus, we decree and we declare that health shall spring forth. I don't care what stage it is. I don't care what hour it is. I know that God is a deliverer and I know that God is a healer. And everybody shall be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed right now in the name of Jesus. You say, Pastor, how can you say that? Because I can go back candy green I can go by this uh, Frida I can go by different ones who in this church were in fat stage 5 cancer and the doctor said that they were going to die but God said I tell you now that if you believe me I am a miracle worker I am a healer I am a deliverer and I am a God that makes a way out of no way I dare y'all to start praising God I dare you to call God who is a miracle worker I dare you to call God who is a healer and we speak that the angels of God will go heal right now send healing deliver healing right now in the name of Jesus somebody say Jesus we call on you Jesus we ask you to heal Jesus we ask you to deliver right now shout it louder shout it louder right now Jesus I don't know where you are I don't know what you got to do, but I need you to heal her right now. Heal her, Lord. Heal her, Lord. Restore her life. Heal every cell in the name of Jesus. Heal every cell. If she made it to church just after gets discharged, she didn't come in here for us to feel sorry for her. She came in here for us to praise God for her to get a healing. She didn't get out of she, she did not get out of the hospital. Put her clothes on her body to come to church for us to feel sorry for her. Jesus walk up in here. Jesus walk up in here and heal her. Heal her. Heal her, Lord. Please heal her. We ask you to heal her, Lord. Heal our sister, Lord. you in here that need deliverance. The Lord said, hurry up. Hurry up. Hurry up and believe me. Hurry up and believe me. Hurry up. Hurry up. Hurry up and believe it. Hurry up and believe it right now. Believe it right now. Online, believe it right now. Believe it right now. Believe it right now. Believe it. Assignment from hell. We bind every 
evil spirit, every worker of iniquity. We come against every foul demon that drags up any sickness out of hell, trying to attach itself to our body. We speak the liberality of Jesus right now. Somebody say that place, that place. stay in here for a while. I'm going to pray on her. I'm going to lay hands on her again and I'm going to pray for a couple more of you, but I want to do something that I know the Holy Ghost wants me to do. I heard you. I want to, I'm in that space. I'm in that place. I can feel it. I'm in that place. I'm in that place. I can feel it. I can feel it. I can feel it down to my toes. I can feel it on my head. I can feel it. I can feel the power of God moving. I can feel it. I can feel it. See, sometimes you can't get free from yourself because you don't know that what you're dealing with is generational and it's what you came from. You're trying to get somewhere and it, you can't get there. It's because generational things are there. Sometimes you got to break the hold so you can get going. I want every last one of you, I want to do it quickly, every last one of you, to love your church, to love this church, to love the things we've been doing. The people we've been helping, the ministry we've been doing for 30 years, 30 years, that's a long time. That's a long time, Pastor. That's a long time, man. I want those of you that can to pay your tithes online, hurry up. But those of you that are in the sanctuary, hurry up and prepare the best seat. Move like you want to do it. Don't move like, like you got, don't, don't, don't move like you can't do it. Move like you want to do it. I'm getting ready to pay my tithe. It's first of the month. I'm asking those of you that can sow a seed of 153, do it and hurry up and do it. Smile, smile when you do it. Cause some of y'all look so, I don't even want to be looking at half, but to say some of the saints, the seed is 153 if you can. $153, 153, $153, $153. Online, do it. Come on, hurry up. Sow that seed. Those of you that are gonna do it, get in the middle line, hurry up, hurry up. God said, I'm getting ready to give you more. First, he takes away the debt. He takes away the obligations, the bondage. Come on. Some of y'all can do it. And smile when you do it. And those of you that, can, that can't do it, get as close as you can and hurry up and get in the middle aisle. Because these are my power people. These are my people to help it. Move things. 
are the people that help me make a way out of nowhere. If you can give it, come on. Come on. I promise you. If you, if you can do it, hurry up. I see you. I see you. You gonna do it? I see you. Come on. Come on. Those of you that don't have it, get as close as you can. Hurry up. But get up quick like you like you expect or something. Get up. Come on. You know, spend your money on fingernails and hair. Haircut. Shoe shine. Your favorite game, movie. A little bit softer there. Come on, come on. Don't be looking bound up at the church. Because I guarantee you, and I don't like to bring up the past, but when Pastor and I were in the world, we didn't go in there budgeting. You didn't go in the world out in the club budgeting. No, you didn't. Look at somebody and say, you didn't, you didn't hit the streets then. And I ain't been in the streets in a long time, but I know full well we wasn't on no budget when it was Friday and Saturday. We didn't, I'm a but Larry, did we budget? Y'all don't, they don't know Dr. Darrell and Larry was in the streets together, so I shouldn't tell that, should I? He like, he like no more. I don't care if you don't like it or not. A lace wig, a good lace wig costs 153. I don't want nothing rising up on my head to look like a cat. I want some smooth stuff. You don't want nobody cutting your beard with a two dot, with a little fold, with a rusty little old used shaver. Why do I have to make these comparisons? Because it's the truth. We want God to do for us what we can't do until we get to a place that we can't do it. Ain't no shame in our hustle. I'm working hard. Say, I'm working hard. Say it. I'm working hard. I can't halfway see things, but I think I'm seeing things, but I don't know what I'm seeing. But God is doing it. Somebody say online, God is doing it. I dare you that are online. I know you, I know my online crew, and I know my online visitors, and I know those of you that live out of the country and live out of town. I know you can do it. So do it. Go to Give Lafay PayPal. It's on the screen. Don't make me, don't make me sound like an auctioner. My gift is greater than that. You hear me? Do you hear me? I want that lady, and I told the story. I want that lady, and I don't know why God didn't give me that ticket. I stood there and told that lady to pick a ticket. And I know y'all gonna judge me, I don't care. And she here for a million dollars, and I'm sitting there looking like, why? They said, well, why didn't you, why did you, I'm judging you. I'm a judge on. For the gifts and the call, the callers of God are without repentance. I don't know why she needed it. I must have, God must have, I needed it, God. I don't know why you didn't give it to me. I couldn't get it. She, she said, what you think? I don't know, lady, leave me alone. What would you think of that one? Came back in there, store a week later, the man said, you know that lady, that ticket hit for a million dollars. I wanted to It's the truth. It's the, no, it's the truth. I was down here online lying. It's the truth. And I just sat there and looked. I looked at my, I, I, Pastor didn't help. He like, hmm. I don't know why God didn't let, give it to me. I, I want to talk to him about it. <laughs> I don't know. But I trust the Lord. Say, I trust the Lord. Trust him. And when you trust him, he shows up for you, Tanya. He told me to say your name. He said, Tanya, I'm going to show up for you. Come on and give this seat. Let's go. Come on. Because I got to hurry up. Come on. Come on, saints. And those of you that aren't moving, get something in your hand. Come on, get something in your hand. Something. Somebody say, get something. Get something in your hand. I love you so much.
Y'all got a problem with my testimony, call me. Y'all know how to reach me. Come on. You, you put it down there, and I, there you go. So I get to see some eyes on you. Talk back to me, saints. Talk to me, saints. I got to stay in the spirit. Come on, new spirit online. Where my power people? Where my people that believe in the gifts of the spirit? Come on, new spirit online. I got a word for you. I got a word for you. Come on. Y'all go this way. Yeah, y'all go this way. Dale. Call him. Dale. Go that way. You see, you can't get through, so go that way. Talk back to me, saints. I was in the spirit and out of the spirit on the same day. Come on, new spirit. Go ahead and praise God again. Go ahead and praise God again. Somebody say, go ahead and praise God again. And yet again. And yet again. And yet again. Come on, everybody, stand to your feet. Everybody, if you got two legs, stand on them. Come on, stand up. Stand up in the house of God. I decree and I declare. If I could, if I could have five minutes with the deacons right after church, I would appreciate it. Okay, deacons and deaconess, five minutes. That's all I need. I promise I won't. It's not a long meeting. It's a five-minute meeting. Amen. Somebody say expect. If you do not expect anything, then you have no reason to be disappointed. But when you expect things, you have every reason to be disappointed when they don't show up when they're supposed to show up. God does not mind when you get disappointed. He minds when you stay there. Raise your hand if you hear me. Do you, you heard, thank you for the time. You hear me? God does not mind when you get disappointed. He minds if you stay there. The woman who was leaving with Lot, the Lord told her, don't look back. He said, I don't I forgave you for a lot. So I don't expect you, after we've talked about what I forgave you for, for you to turn around. Let me help him. Elder Freddie, I got to help him. Elder Donna, I got to help him. How God operates. Say, God operates. God knows that the problem is great. And he doesn't have any problem when you get nervous when you see the obstacles. He just wants you to have faith to believe that that mountain can be moved in Jesus' name. See, I have no doubt in my mind that my sister, I don't care what hour they said it is. I know what I know, what I know, what I know, and I stake my life and my reputation on the healing power of Jesus Christ. I know what I know. As I read your post and then we talk as we do in our inbox like we do, I hear what the doctors are saying and I understand that because my mother, my sister, both had cancer. I understand it. But the one thing God will not let me do is look at the understanding over the truth. He said, do you believe that I am able to do this? He didn't say, I have a problem with doing this. He said, do you believe that I'm able to do this? The minute you connect 
And I'm talking about financially, I'm talking about children-wise, I'm talking about maritally, I'm talking about situations. Pastor and I have had situations in our life that have been insurmountable, odds against us elders, that I would say, I promise you this is I want to give up now. But the Lord would step in and say, do you believe that I'm able to do this? Do you believe it? Because the minute you believe that, you, that he can do this, he goes to work on it. He goes to work on it. Vanessa, he goes to work on it. I have no idea how we made it through COVID as a church. Financially, no money coming in for the, from the civic, no money coming in from daycare, no money, but, the, but they didn't stop the payment. Y'all don't understand, they didn't stop. Leah, am I telling the truth, baby? They didn't stop the payment on the, no, the mortgage note. We, we couldn't be in here, the numbers were not adding up. But God said, Belinda, do you believe that I am able to do this? And I said, Lord, I believe. He went to work. All he needs is you to say, I believe you. Mother, no, the Lord told me to tell you he's got so much more in store for you. No, so many years, so much life, so much enjoyment, so much, so much more. And he said, I'm going to step in and be your resource. And I'm going to give you what you need to continue enjoying your life, saith the Lord. He told me to tell you that. He told me to tell you that there will be no slack. Elder Marie, the Lord told me to tell you today, he said I needed to get you out of the house so you could move by faith. Because you were staying in the house, it was fear. Don't move. He said you were staying in the house because it was fear. You were fearful. But God said that the minute you stepped out of the house, back into his house, everything is going to now line up according to the will. It don't matter about what you thought you were supposed to go do in California, none of that. God said, I allow that to happen to see if you understood the level of faith that I'm getting ready to operate in your life with. He said, I'm getting ready to operate on a level that you cannot comprehend. So I needed to allow the enemy to step. Oh, you better catch him. Wait, yo, 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 what, what? Come on. He said, I'm stepping in now and I'm getting a little bit lower, uh-uh, 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 don't do that, don't do that, don't push me, don't push me yet. I need to step in a little bit softer too. I needed to step in when the doctor's reports were bad. I, I, you say, God, why would you allow the doctor's report to get this bad? Why didn't you just heal me? Why would you let it get this bad? Because I need to move in the earth realm, saith the Lord. I need to move by healing and I need the doctors to say I don't know what happened and then that's when you say God healed me okay okay God said this very day you can mark it down that I am changing the course of your financial stance he said you can mark it down that this very day that I am changing the course of your family he said this very day I'm going into your life and causing the broken trenches and areas of your life to be repaired he said this very day Jennifer that I'm going into your life for your daughter um, Trina I'm going into her life and I'm changing every circumstances he said this very day I am turning her back to the kingdom he said this very day he said I know you may think that's my sister of course I would give her a word but I don't I, I don't flow like that God said to tell you that this very day that your children that you thought were lost are now found he said you better go he, he said this very day he said this very day I am recreating miracles he said, this very day, I'm doing things that you could not humanly do for your daughters. He said, you can't do it. He said, can't do it. You think that they do their thing? They do do their thing. But God said, I'm getting ready to do my thing. He said, as long as you didn't stop praying for them 
and as long as you don't stop interceding for them and as long as you don't stop connecting the word to them whether they receive it now or not God said if you connect my word to them my word will not return unto me void uh, God said I'm erasing personal debt so that you can go get the desire of your heart, the end time blessing, the blessing that's on, that was created for you. Not the one you got when you was foolish, but the one you get when you're wise. And God said five of you, ten, between five or 10 of you are gonna be so financially strong that anything the church needs and your life needs, you are gonna write it in one check. And he didn't say that's going to be long off. Somebody say, I got a five-year plan. Say it. Somebody say, I got a two-year plan. A pastor and I have a two-year plan. Somebody say, two year. I'm going to see such a divine turnaround. Glenn, Glenn I'm going to see such. Say it. Say it, Minister Joy Joy. Say it online. I don't care if y'all, but she going long. Log off then if you don't want to work. Log off. Two years, I'm gonna be financially strong. Say it. Say it. Say it. This is the last year you're gonna pay on a vacation. I'm paying on my vacation. Say last year. This is the last year. This is, this is, what's today's date? The 7th, April, I decree and I declare that the overflow of heaven has been released to the faithful, the favorable, and those who have been faithful and honorable to God. The overflow has been released from heaven on April 7th. I hear it, I see it. The abundance, the overflow has been released. And right now, in the name of Jesus, y'all gonna see such miracles manifestations increases you're not just getting a raise on your job that's not what's about to happen in here this is not what is about to happen this is not what is about to happen you're not getting a raise on your job that's man-made god said you're getting ready to see what i'm gonna do for you come on families are being restored Life is being restored. Church is being restored. I dare y'all to praise God right now. In the name of Jesus. Those of you, and I'm not talking about my members and the saints in here. Those of you that didn't give online, you better hurry up and give. This connects you to everything that you've been looking for. You've been lost some stuff. This is connecting it to it. See, if you don't give up on the word that God gives you, God will make that thing take a detour, lock down some roads, shut down some avenues. He'll, he'll, shut, he'll shut everything up just so you can get your manifestation. Yes, he will. He'll shut it down. If they don't bless you, they'll shut down the whole company. And then the person that's coming in will make you supervisor. Watch. You're going to testify about it. You're going to testify about it. Say, I'm going to testify about it. I don't, care what the, I don't care what the critics say. I don't care. I read my Bible. I read my Bible, Elder Freddie. And I know what the Lord says. Say, overflow. Increase. Seed time and harvest. Abundance. Health. Healing. Joy. Our minds. In the name of Jesus. Come on and shout about it. The offering is blessed. I pray y'all did what you know you could do. Did you do it? Thank you for your seat on Thursday. I saw it. It was right on time. <laughs> it was right on time. God knew we had need of it. Listen, New Spirit Revival Center. Tuesday, I'm so sorry we let y'all know at the last minute the prayer was online. But I told y'all like months ago to be ready for stuff like that. So I felt like, I really feel like the Holy Ghost 
is moving in such a way that I'm going to really, Pastor and I were talking about it the other day. We're going to have sometimes pop in here and have sometimes prayer in the daytime. I've been feeling the Holy Ghost calling me to do that. That if we don't meet at night, I'm going to meet in the day. And for those of you that want to go to that next level, y'all will show up. Ain't no demand, ain't no mandatory. But I really feel like God is getting ready to do something so extraordinary that is going to take us to get out of our ordinary. You feel that? You got to get out of your ordinary to get the extraordinary. You got to, you got to. You got to leave room for increase. And if I don't know nothing, and I do know something, increase is on the way. Elder Donna, it's on the way. Elders, it's on the way. I was going to open the church, but I'm not going to open the church, but I really feel like deliverance is more important than you joining the church today. Deliverance, if you get delivered in your mind and you stop fighting with your mind about your future, you can get there so much quicker. Somebody say amen, Pastor. Amen. Don't forget who you are in the Lord. Don't forget that the Lord has made you beautiful. Just because you're struggling don't mean you gotta look ugly. Just because something hits your life don't mean you can't praise God. Somebody say, I'm gonna praise God. I'm gonna praise God. I release you today. I pray right now that the blessings of the Lord be upon you. And those of you, we had a small glitch in the online feed. They're gonna air it again so you can watch and listen to the message in its entirety. I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you watch what God, you watch what God does in the next 60 days. He's moving you so that you, it's gonna be uncomfortable for maybe, maybe, maybe two to three weeks, maybe. Just when I say uncomfortable, I mean you're gonna to try to be like, well, what is this about? Why is this? And then it's going to disappear. It's like smoke. It's like a fog. It's like a fog. It's going to pop up and you're going to try to figure out well, what is this about? And it's going to be gone. But it's so that the Lord can move in. The spirit. He, he's getting ready to move things. He needed a camouflage is what I'm trying to say. God, needs a, God needed a camouflage to move in and move in all of the increased things that he's going to put in place. And you're going to look up in your life and you're going to say, when did this get in my life? This is good. God is moving supernaturally and you're going to see the manifestations of it in the next 60 days. Do you hear me? Somebody say, I hear you, Pastor. May the blessings of the Lord be upon you. I bless you in the name of the Lord and may you go and have the best week that you've had in a long time. In Jesus' name, God bless you. God bless y'all. Say it. I want you to have on the screen scripture says in proverbs chapter 3 verses 9 through 10 that if we honor the lord with our possessions he will fill our life with plenty we hope to see you back here again on sunday in person or online at the same time also join us on tuesdays at 7 30 p.m in person or online for a prophetic prayer service. And if you're looking to draw closer to God and get a greater understanding of his word, we encourage you to join us for Bible studies on Thursdays online at 7.30 p.m. with Dr. Daryl Scott. We hope you have a wonderful week and we look forward to seeing you soon.